A crucial part of any fire alarm system is a manual initiating device of some sort. In the United States and Canada, we have pulse stations, whereas in most other parts of the world, call points are the norm. However, for a while now, there's been some debate as to whether call points or pulse stations are superior. Today, we're going to be analyzing the pros and cons of each type of initiating device and deciding which one is truly superior. Let's get started. So obviously I can't compare every single device that has ever existed just because there's so many different types and styles of pull stations and call points. However, I will be comparing some of the common ones today. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about today is the ease of resetting. So pretty much standard with all American pull stations is that they are resettable. So like let's say I pull any pull station, I can get a key for it and then reset it easily by just opening it and flipping a switch or just simply opening and closing it. Whereas with a lot of call points, they are break glass. So what that means is once you activate it and the glass is broken, you have to either replace the piece of glass or take the call point out of service. Now, to be fair, a lot of call points are resettable. However, there's still a good amount of uh, non-resettable break glass call points that this would apply to. All right, so speaking of resetting, let's talk about keys. So pretty much all American pull stations, to reset them, you either use a metal key or you open them with a screwdriver. On the flip side of things, here's a photo I found on the internet of a call point test key set. As you can see, pretty much all of them are made of plastic. I'm really impartial to plastic keys just because they're usually cheap. I happen to own a few call point keys. They're all made of plastic, and I actually had one break, and the other two haven't broken yet, but they're just super cheap. Now, a lot of call point keys aren't actually just used for resetting. They are used to test the call point because obviously on break glass call points, you can't just break the glass every time it needs to be tested. So you can see here, you stick the key in and then the glass drops to simulate someone activating the call point. The testing mechanism that the key goes into is pretty flimsy and you can see here half the time it doesn't even go up properly and I have to fiddle with it for a minute before it goes back to normal. Again, check out how flimsy this key is. So now let's talk about intimidation factor. Uh, all of us fire alarm enthusiasts know that break glass call points actually have a small film of plastic over the glass so you don't cut yourself when you press the glass, but an average person you find might not know that. If an average person had to activate a break glass call point, they'd probably get a little frightened of the glass and either not activate the call point or go find something else to press the glass with. On the other hand, pull stations are just glorified light switches and they're not intimidating to operate. Now, to be fair, there are some pull stations like the Simplex 4251-30 that do require you to break glass before activating the device. However, these devices aren't too common anymore, and they are provided with knockers so you don't have to touch the glass with your hand to activate the device. On top of that, when these devices are activated, that is, the glass is broken, you can still reset them safely without buying a new piece of glass or taking the device out of service. The glass is not necessarily required, it's just an added protection feature for the pull station. Call points are also pretty easy to accidentally activate. Obviously, on pull stations, a lot of them are dual action, but even on single action pull stations, you have to deliberately pull out or push down to get them to activate, whereas on call points, all you have to do is push them in and they activate. Just to kind of demonstrate this, say you have a call point or a pull station installed in a wood shop environment. If someone were to walk into a call point with a piece of wood, it would probably activate like so. On the flip side of things, if we take a look at a BG-12 pull station, which is a pretty common pull station, a piece of wood simply pushing on it isn't going to do anything. You have to deliberately get that piece of wood into there and then push in while pulling down at the same time to get it to activate. Also, hypothetically, even if they both activated, this call point now needs a new piece of glass or it's not going to work. On the other hand, I can literally just reset the BG-12. Anyways, now it's time for the advantages of the call point. Oh wait, I can't think of any right now. Alright, so the first advantage I see is that call points are universally activated. What I mean by that is, regardless of model, type, brand, they all activate pretty much the same way. You just push on them. On the other hand, pull stations, although they're all super easy to activate by design, they do activate slightly differently from each other. So for example, a T-bar might activate a little differently from a BG-12, um, and they're not universal. 
Call points are also bilingual, so most of them don't even have lettering on them anymore, just because it's so easy to operate. You literally just push on the target and it activates. So this is actually a good design because, you know, you don't have to actually speak the language, but then again, it is fairly obvious how to activate a pull station too, considering most of them have arrows as well. Nevertheless, that is my analysis on call points and pull stations. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you disagree with my analysis, I'd like to hear your opinion in the comment section. So leave a comment as to whether you think pull stations or comments, <laughs> not comments. Uh, wow, I really can't talk today. Whether you think pull stations or call points are better. Thank you for watching.